Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Morose, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March when we were first on stay-at-home orders as a way to remind us that though we are separated, we are not alone. God is always with us, God is always loving us, and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So good morning. And you may notice, those of you who've been here before, that the background has changed. So um, all, all that I've really done is a change perspective. So I used to face that way, and now I'm facing this way. But we, re we, we rearranged the furniture in the dining room to make space for my yoga mat. So, because this has the best carpet for, for yoga, the dining room. So, things have been moved around a little bit, but we are still here. So, now you can see the decorations that are on the back wall behind me. Well, this morning, I'm going to take a step back. Good morning, Jean. Uh, sitting with your two-and-a-half-year-old great-grandson, Logan. Oh, how fun. Yes. Uh, another thing that this um, setup will mean is that I will no longer have a cat screaming over my shoulder. Uh, that doesn't happen so much in the morning, but I've had Zoom meetings where um, Katie decides that it's time to be fed again and again and again, and she's like over my shoulder screaming at me. Anyway, so this morning we're going to take a step back. Um, uh, we've been kind of crunched with uh, the readings because of the day of Epiphany and I was trying to get those readings in and so we didn't get to all of um, <laughs> thank you Jean <laughs> um, we didn't get to <clears throat> to all of the readings from yesterday and there was one that I just could not pass by because it is like to me it's a really important word that we need to hear um, so we are going to look at what was yesterday's second reading from 1 Corinthians. And those of you who remember it, you may be thinking, prostitutes? <laughs> uh, quite honestly, having sex with prostitutes? That, that is what the, the um, context of the reading is. But... There's way more to it than that. So, so no, we are not going to talk about prostitution here. All right. So I'll read the whole thing so that we get the context of what Paul is, is um, talking about. And then I want to get to the specific, which is the first verse is is what I really want to focus on today. So here we are. Um, the And the heading that my Bible has, which is the Lutheran Study Bible from Augsburg Fortress, um, it says, Glorify God in body and spirit. All things are lawful for me. And that's in quotation marks. So someone has said that. But not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me. Again, that's in quotation marks. But I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. Quotation marks. And God will destroy both one and the other. 
The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, in quotation marks again, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. All right, so... Uh, the the context then whoo, was the the Corinthians were they were an interesting bunch because they had a whole lot of things that that they were doing and and this particular section um, is about the temple prostitutes so the the Greek religions and so you'd go to the temple. And, well, the men did, and have sex with the temple prostitutes, male and female uh, temple prostitutes. And it was, you know, about fertility and all that kind of stuff. And so um, so that's the, the background. But this isn't the only problem along these lines that where I want to, to focus that the Corinthians had. Um, they also had the problem of they would, um, uh, at that time, you had to, it's kind of like today, actually, in the pandemic. You had to bring your own bread and wine for communion. Uh, so those of you who are communing at home, you have to come up with your own bread and wine. Uh, but what was happening is that not only was there bread and wine, but there would be an entire meal. And those who were wealthy would bring lots of food and lots of wine. They would um, eat to bursting and they would get drunk. Where the poor then just had their little bit and they were hungry still. And so uh, Paul points to that and, and, and says, eh, is this really what um, communion is supposed to be about? Um, but it comes back to verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. So they were freed from the law. Through Jesus Christ, we are freed from the law. So um, for <clears throat> the Jewish people at the time, it was uh, all of the laws, the food laws and and um, the purity laws and, and all of that kind of stuff that um, that we find in um, uh, Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And that was very freeing to be released from those laws, especially for um, folks who had been ostracized uh, because of those laws and uh, most of the time from no fault of their own whether it was an illness or like leprosy or um, or they were too poor to pay for the the um, the uh, sacrifices at the temple so there were, you know, there were all sorts of ways that human beings took something that was supposed to create a community and, um, and to make it a unique community, connecting people together. Human beings took it and made a hierarchy out of it. And that was not what the law was meant to be. 
All right. So the people are saying that um, all things are lawful for me. So we're not bound by the law anymore. And that's true. But does that mean that you go out and have sex with a prostitute? Does that mean that you live in drunkenness? Does that mean that um, you live in uh, greed, uh, accumulating stuff all for yourself and not sharing uh, with anyone else? Um, does that, is that what it means? Heck no. So what, what I love about this verse, because this is one that I point to again and again and again, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. And okay, I'm going to be blunt this morning. To me, what scry screams out in our present uh, context is the folks who are protesting on the streets because they don't want to wear masks. All right, I've said it. I think that they are the ones who need to read this verse again and again and again. Okay, so it is, um, uh, we are free in this country. That does not mean that our freedom is always beneficial for us. So, okay, maybe you feel like you can't be forced to wear a mask, but does wearing a mask help you or help your neighbor? I mean, that's really what, what the mask wearing, uh, and I apologize for getting political, but to me, that's what this verse is all about. That, um, because this isn't, this isn't political. It's about caring for your neighbor. So um, I am free to go about without a mask. And if I have COVID-19, I spread it everywhere. I'm free to do that. And people may die because of my freedom. And people may get sick because of my freedom. And people may end up in the hospital because of my freedom. No, no, that is not what our freedom is meant for. And so specifically what Paul is talking about here is, is the community of Christ and the divisions that have uh, developed in the community. So, you know, this specifically is about um, uh, having sex with the temple prostitutes, um, but it is just one problem with the same basic root that I can do whatever the heck I want and it doesn't matter what it does to anybody else or even what it does to myself because I'm free to do whatever the heck I want. And Paul says, well, that's true. You are free. You are not bound by the law. But is it beneficial for you to do these things? And I say, Heck no, not beneficial for you and not beneficial for your neighbor. So, um, yes, I, I, I like to quote this one frequently, is not beneficial. Um, we can do lots of things. We, we have the freedom to do lots of things, things that aren't against the law or even things that are are against the law you know we we can do them but is it good for us is it good for our community is it good for our neighbors that's where we need to really focus is who is impacted by my behavior and it it, it may be just me but even that um We look at things like um, addiction, which I know has a, a neurological as well as a psychological aspect to it, um, but very much a, a, a physical aspect to it. Um, and so this is where the second half 
of this really comes in. All things are lawful for me. So I can drink, drink myself into oblivion, but I will not be dominated by anything. So if, if you are struggling with addiction, anyone who has an addiction understands they are being dominated. And so what this really means, it's not a um, conviction of those who are addicts because that really, is, there's a physiological thing going on there. It really comes down to, if your friend is an alcoholic, do you offer him a beer or uh, an alcoholic drink? Because you're free to do it. But is that the loving thing to do? Is it beneficial to your, your neighbor? who has an addiction problem? No. So anyway, all right. I've gone off on that enough, I think. But to me, man, just plaster that everywhere. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. So we have minds that are able to discern what is beneficial and what is not. God gave us those brains. God gave us that ability. And we have to reflect. We have to be honest with ourselves and confess when we fail at focusing on what is beneficial. Does that mean that you're not allowed to have any fun? No, but because I have a lot of fun in life. But the things that give me pleasure that, that I find fun, they don't hurt anybody else. Hopefully. I mean, you know, that's my goal. That's my goal. So. All right. So focusing on the community this morning, our song is, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? And I picked this hymn particularly because of verse two. So we're going to sing verse one and verse two. All right, here we go. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. All right. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Plaster that on the inside of your eyelids so that you see that every day. That's what I say. All right. So, what are our prayer concerns today? So we want to continue to pray for all affected by COVID-19, which in one way or another is all of us, but, uh, but especially for those infected, uh, for um, the, what are they calling it? Uh, Long-term COVID? which my sister and brother-in-law, I, I don't think that's what it's called exactly, but um, they have a specific name for it. But those who they're, they've recovered from the basic illness, um, but they're still, they still don't feel good. They, or else they're developing uh, lung problems and a heart disease. Um, my sister is having uh, severe headaches and body aches um, that just have not gone away. Uh, we pray for the families of those who have died. We're getting close to 400,000 
in the United States alone. Um, and then for those who will die today. And then uh, we want to continue to pray for a peaceful transition of power on, on Wednesday. So is there anything else? I scared everybody away. Any other prayer concerns today? My coffee's cold. Any anybody else? Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our prayers and if you um, have one, uh, go ahead and type it in and I will bring it in at the end. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this time to come together to study your word, to share our prayer concerns. And Lord, uh, we lift up the concerns that have been concerns for quite a while. Uh, we pray for all who are impacted by COVID-19, which quite honestly is every single one of us in one way or another. But we specifically lift up those who are infected with the virus. We, uh, and we pray for their families that are caring for them. We pray for those who are hospitalized. We lift up the families of those uh, almost 400,000 uh, residents of the United States who have died. Uh, be with them, comfort them, and strengthen them um, as uh, they deal with their grief. Lord, we lift up those who are having long-term effects of COVID-19, especially my sister and brother-in-law. Uh, we pray for those who are developing lung disease and heart disease as a result of this. We pray that they might have complete healing. And we lift up those who will die this day. Lord, we, uh, in the midst of COVID-19, we are also dealing with uh, political unrest. And Lord, we pray that on Wednesday, we will have a peaceful transition of power we ask for your protection of uh, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. Uh, we pray for President Trump as he uh, leaves his office and for um, Vice President Pence. Lord, um, in all things, help us keep focused on the peace that you bring us and the peace that is your desire for all people. We lift up Jim uh, Chandler, who is in the ICU at Tri-State. We ask for healing for him. All of these things we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks for being here this morning. And remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.